Whoa! Good morning, morning, morning. Welcome to another edition of Ah Atsi Thursday edition. It's the Wake Up Nigeria show. They say life is a work of art. If you do not like what you see, paint over it. <laughs> Love it. Can you feel the energy, guys? Yeah, Can you, you know, feel it? said that Thursday is kind of mm -hmm. the most important day of the week. Why? Because it's a day to track your achievements during the week. Yes. Because you say Friday to catch up. Yeah. How's yours been, though? Has it been productive? Has yours, yours? been productive, though? So, so. Yeah. I think I ha okay. So last week was very busy for me. So this week I decided to you know just you know temper it down. You know, not stress. Which just you know, follow the pace. You just move with the flow. So yeah, that's exactly what I'm doing this week. But hey, guys, whatever works for you, just go ahead, and just go at it. And if it has not been productive, just resist the urge to shalaye. Don't complain. Just be filled with gratitude okay we're just another day from the weekend so we go again next week yes so, <laughs> so welcome once again to wake up nigeria we implore you to get on this roller coaster ride as we take you into our world of great content especially curated for you i haven't said that particular line in a long while are you serious <laughs> yeah okay you know what uh we'll tell you what we have in store for you my name is mary Bashra Ali. and i'm mm email coche remember guys that you can join the show live on gold tv channel 16 and your chef 49 and yes let's move on to what we have left on the, what we have for you on the show today on our display we have adeshola agbeleye he's a visionary nigerian artist who's known for his unique art pieces and we'll be sharing his journey with him later on time for the news update on wake up nigeria i am mary bashua alimi the national broadcasting commission is set to resume the digital switch of a project across the country as president Tinubu has approved a 10 billion naira grant to revive the project Director General of the Commission, Charles Ibube, disclosed this at a joint media briefing with the Nigeria Communications Commission in Abuja. TVC News, Tijesu Adeoye reports. Terrorism financing in Nigeria is a significant security issue that fuels the activities of insurgent groups like Boko Haram and ISWAP. Reports indicate that the groups receive funding through various means, including local and international sources, which enable them to sustain their operation. Efforts to cut now apologies for that. Now moving on, a crucial supply chains around the threat across North America after a real labor dispute in Canada led to shut down freight traffic on the country's two largest railways. Canadian National Railway and a Canadian Pacific Kansas City locked out nearly 9,300 workers after midnight on Thursday after failing uh, to clinch a late deal with the Teamsters Union. Hours after the strike began, Prime Minister Justin Trudeau said the federal government would soon announce steps to resolve the work stoppage. Trudeau offered no further insight into the government's plan to resolve the shutdown. Canada sends around 75% of all the goods it exports to the U.S., mostly over rail. A prolonged dispute could disrupt shipments of a wide range of goods, from grains and beans to potash, coal and timber. The, lo the lockout will also snarl commutes for tens of thousands of people in Toronto, Montreal and uh, Vancouver, where lines rely on CPKC-owned tracks. And with that, uh, we've come to the end of the news updates for the sound week of Nigeria. Just stay with us. We'll be back in a bit. All right. All that exercise, keeping fit. Mm -hmm. You know, I like to keep fit in my mind. In your mind? In my mind. Wow. But I walk a lot. So yeah. if you see me walk by, holla, your girl. girl. Wow. <laughs> Maybe he's manifesting her... Uh, 
what? what she wants to look like <laughs> in her but mind. I look like it. Look at me now. I'm Ooh. gorgeous. What Ooh, you look at I, that. I love myself. <laughs> I'm fat or slim. Wow. I love myself. Uh, so, do you know what? If I, do, I don't know how you're able to, you know, your tummy. Yeah. I, I envy that tummy, to I be honest. It's, <laughs> not, it's not. It's not. Ah, okay. It's Thank not. Some of us are still battling with belly fats <laughs> and has refused Yeah, to but you know, I, I saw a post saying that the inventor of the treadmill died under 50. My dear, and, and some the, other the person such that, posts. The person that invented the, the Kentucky Fried Chicken died around 90. So, so I don't it, know. Yeah, but then again, <laughs> at the end of the day, I didn't do it for themselves or for <laughs> other people. So you need to put that into consideration. Oh, wow. You know, yeah. talking about all of this, I I'm mm. actually happy we can start on a light note mm -hmm. because hmm, what we're about to talk about is something really sad mm -hmm. and uh, quite unfortunate. So it has to do with uh, a, a Nigerian NHS nurse uh, who went on an eight-hour shift leaving a 10-month-old baby behind. Ten weeks. Is it weeks no, or weeks? It's month or? Weeks. Uh, no, no, it can't. Ten weeks. Ah, um, well, let's hey, confirm this. Look at it now. No, no. Yes, now. So she wrapped eh? this baby up. Ten weeks. Be weeks because a ten-month-old would still yeah, be. Yeah. Ten around. weeks. Wow. Ten-week-old baby. Yeah. And then, unfortunately, by the time she got back, the child was unresponsive. She called for emergency care. Lied to the authorities that oh, she left the child with a child minder. Uh, then there were some incriminating messages on her phone where she was. How can you even send that? Those kind of messages. Telling the child minder to please to lie help on, cover yeah. up for her and all that. Wow. But basically, she's been sentenced to three years in prison for mm -hmm. negligence. And yeah. uh, so it begs the question. She's a single mom, I must mention, which means, uh, in case you're wondering what happened with her partner, mm -hmm. it wasn't mm -hmm. in the picture at all. So this, this actually begs uh, a lot of questions. Number one, I'm worried about her mental health. Mm -hmm. The okay. fact that the single mother was attached made me wonder could she be going undergoing postnatal depression because that worried me for a woman to leave her child and she didn't just leave the child she swaddled the child the child actually <laughs> died of overheating mm. so she wow. swaddled the child tried to keep the child um, you know warm then went on an eight hour shift it's bad enough that the child went hungry for eight hours mm. but then on top of everything wow. uncared for 10 weeks old ten weeks that's and then, that's two months that's two and a half but, months yeah, and then, then you ask yourself she again. should even still you know technically or ethically you know being that she's a working mother she should even be still on just that's what i wanted to say that i also wonder why isn't she on, on even if she's a nurse so the maternity no, no, no. leave in, uh, because in the UK whatever, is not small. Your it's like a year old. Not, regardless Nine of months your, paid, so, three months unpaid. Mm -hmm. There is no, there is no excuse. And you can even extend under, it. There is no excuse under the sun for what happened. Um, but what Mary said is very key. This issue of postpartum depression, mm -hmm. people do not uh, take seriously. Uh, there was definitely something going on with her mentally for her to actually... You know, the way I'm even thinking about it, she could have even forgotten. Mm. Mm. She could have forgotten. That was, a, the, in fact... It could have been a, a mind blank, like something just snapped for her to have left a 10-month-old... 10, 10 weeks. Or a 10-week-old alone. Um, she's... She, there, there's so many stories. Uh, there, there's so many uh, cultural, ethical, tra tradition, ethnic traditions mm -hmm. where they always say you don't leave a new mom alone for the mm -hmm. first so, so, so number of mm -hmm. days. Mm -hmm. Every Africans do it a lot. Have someone, have a companion. It is actually because of things like exactly. This. But abroad, people don't realize that once you go abroad, it's just help, you on yourself. It's just you. You can't even ask for a, a cup of Gary. Talk less of having someone come mind your child, mm. you know. Um, child minders are also expensive. Really expensive. Because I, I, I actually was taken care of by child minders myself. And I know how much my mom had to pay whenever these people look. And then they're also doing so almost illegally, minding other people's children because they don't have... Um, Not all of them. Well, not all of them, yeah. but a lot, they don't have registration. Registration, certifications, yeah. Environment all of those, yeah. might not even be safe. Mm. So Africans, I'm going to say Africans, even a lot of Asians, when they send their kids places, um, they're, they're dealing with a lot. They're dealing with so much. For, for her to not still be on maternity leave also begs the question. That's Why? the big question for me. Why is she not on maternity leave? Ten week old mom. Yeah. I don't care if she's trying to get her full salary because maybe it's, there's going to be a pay cut, whatever. But 
Her colleagues couldn't say, what are you doing no, at work? What, not even her colleagues. She's some, she's re, somebody's responsible for her at the office. Mm. So at the time when she arrived, what, what, how many colleagues reached out and said, uh, sis, why are you in the office? Yeah. Her boss, uh, your why, have you, why are you in the office? Why are you, uh, why are you, you sh technically should be on leave? Yeah, why are you here? Like All of those questions. Cares. I there agree. was another story. That's why I said boss. Week. I didn't even say colleague in the first place. I said her boss, which yeah. who is responsible for her. Because ethically, you sh those kind of questions, you know, you should be asked uh -huh. based off, okay, um, you, how's, how's your baby? Who's taking care of your baby? All of those questions need to be asked and investigated because you also you need know, to pay also, attention. This brings me to story? something else. Okay. Just a moment. This brings me to something else that we ignore a lot. And it has to do with Africans in diaspora. A lot of them are going through a lot, especially Wait. when they have children by themselves. They do not tell you all the story. For those of you who keep thinking their lives are a whole lot better than yours, send me dollars. The exchange rate is good and all that, or rather bad, depending mm. on what angle you're looking at. Mm. The reality is many of them suffer through this alone. Remember, we had this conversation earlier in the week, and then um, from the conversation, I remember we said that don't, be, don't join the bandwagon you know, effect, or don't join the bandwagon to Jackba. You need to, you know, first off, do your research. Yeah. Find out this thing, this responsibility or this job that I'm going to take on. Is it okay for me? Am I going to thrive in this space? Do I have the support system to help me. I know that they're in the, in the UK. There are a few communities, there are a few support groups. Yeah. Like, you know, I know the, the Yoruba community, yeah. the Islamic community, they rally around each other whenever, you know, someone who's coming into that space. You know, they, they support yeah. each other, they help each other, create job opportunities for them. You know, try, try a way to infuse yourself into those sort of communities so that in cases like this, you won't be caught, you know, stranded. Because but in this kind of situation, she was trended. Let's not also forget the, the bills, the huge responsibilities and bills that are, you know, beholding on anyone who's, who's, who's the, an immigrant. Who is taking yeah, exactly. all the to take care of this So, woman. you know, also looking at the fact that she was also trying to meet up with the financial, obligations. you know, obligations and challenges. It's not an challenges. excuse, but is it true? It's not an, an excuse, yes, because, I mean, you don't know what she could have got. You know, she, might, she might have even had hospital bills piling up that she needed to sort out, you know, because considering the fact that that baby is so young, you know, she may not have cleared her bills and she still wanted to do that. It's not taken away from the fact that, I mean, what happened happened. It's a very, very sad and unfortunate event. I look at that. And we, I, we, I we, we, think about we, com we commensurate with, with her and, you know, oh, yeah. the family. But it, it's, it's a very serious issue. I think, I think she should have been taken to a, a, a facility where her mental health is should being be evaluated. I'm yeah. actually questioning this sentencing I because I'm yeah. wondering if her mental health was evaluated. I looked at the photo of the lady and I said to myself, she this looks lady stressed. looks stressed. She looks stressed. She looks like, okay, she looks if like, you like yeah, just, yes, years, just, yes, yes. Just she looks breathe. like she had given up. Yeah. Yes. Mm. She, she, I mean, she it, looks... It, it was, she it was look heartbreaking. Yeah, it was, I was it actually, was actually. Um, going to mention earlier on the fact that a lot of people don't realize that the communities we have here in Africa are there for a reason. Mm. A lot of the communities abroad, yes, they try to sort of mimic and emulate, but everybody has their own hustle. Which everybody we have in Nigeria, so, especially in Lagos? It's not village, oh. I'm Lagos no, no, now. No, no, no. See, Mary, see, we now I'm have, telling we, you that, which of course I need to give though, kudos to a few support groups. Exactly. I've seen a few support groups here. You know, here, in, in, they're like in small, smaller groups. Small when as, I, you when know, I even say support, they're coming together right? and, you know, supporting one Mary, another. And, you know, there's no way and, you will come to meet me yeah. and tell me, oh, please, I need to get diapers. Mm. And I would not respond to you. There's no way, even if it's just a small pack of mm. hen, mm. I would still help. If you told me for some reason, oh, I ran out of baby milk, my child is in the is is with me, please could you help me out? There's no way. See, There's see, something about the I, Africans. I, I'm sorry to say so, this because but you're coming from an angle of the privilege. people around you. Yes, privilege. That's what I'm saying. We're talking of people who don't even have yes, access to people like this. What? And then imagine if people around you mm -hmm. they say a rich man. I'm not saying that you are all rich and of then course. you can afford to feed so many. But Answer. one person who is, you know, privileged amongst people who are not, you, you will soon join them. And it's realistic because they will be coming to you for help. I hear what you're saying. But See, guess what? The African, the, African the, the Nigerian-ness in us will not allow 
other you, people. You, but you know, our our brothers do not also hand. forget the role of the of the religious centers in this. Ah. So now look at this, the, 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 the churches, at the mosques. Look at the lady at Wells Fargo. You know, there are also these support groups as you know, at in all of those churches, in all of those four religious centers. And she felt she died mm. at her desk. And four days later was when they found her. So they did say that most of them work remote. Yes, so the 60 year old at her desk wasn't. Four even days. Was it? Is there no security man that does the rounds? What about the CCTV because cameras? Because I know security men do the rounds to check that everything what is fine. What about the CCTV cameras? Uh, uh, they, they was said they that. saw so her. anything could have happened. That means the company going is susceptible it's liable. to yeah. uh, crime. Yes. Because so if something that's had what happened, I'm trying to say. That's why I'm saying, community-wise, there's no way I would see someone, see, like one of my people, and I use that, our people, our communities are stronger as Africans. I repeat than that else. the community is also dependent on where, which type of community and where. I don't we are, think we are so, Mary. This. See, mm -hmm. I don't are, think see, so. Well, see, let me tell you something. Among, you don't, don't think know what so. it means to be and I And I say this because, I say this because um, I have seen, you know, people, yeah. you know, people who are not too well to do, you rally know, rally around, around yes. you know, so who come to come into these communities and, you know, people actually come together and try to help them. You know, show, 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 show do we not have a, a recent story last week? A one, it's not even last week. This morning I saw it. A one-year-old baby that was defiled by the father of the seven-year-old that was asked to help them mind the child. Why are we oh. talking as if we don't know that a lot of madness is in the society? We're not who do you want to house. leave your child with? You are not sure who you are leaving your child with. You are not sure of what is going to happen afterwards. Uh, I agree with My you. My own child, let's come back to this lady. I really hope that she gets maybe some kind of appeal yeah. and then something yeah. is really done, especially having her mental health evaluated. Sorry, or are you on Sheke Kere? All right. Maybe going through it. <laughs> she is, actually. I need to, I, I need to, I, I need to just mention that you can, of course, contribute to of the course, conversation. Yeah. Use our hashtag Wake Up Nigeria on TVC and tag us Wake Up Nigeria TVCE with your thoughts. Let's right. take a break, guys. We'll be back. Thanks for staying with us, guys. Welcome to the kitchen. Yes, we have our very own, the Dunas chef with us. Hey. Good morning, everyone. It's always a pleasure to have her with us. And this morning, she's taking us to Ijebuode, right? Yeah. We are making a goosey Ijebu, right? So if you have explored all the different ways you can enjoy your goosey soup, and you have not tried this one before. We have got you. So let's talk about the ingredients for our egusi ijabo this morning. So for our egusi ijabo, what we need egusi is um, the melon seed. Okay. So egusi is the melon. Is melon. Mm. So we need the seed. We need um, at a, that is chili pepper, the dry chili pepper. Okay. It's called atagbigbe in the market. Yes. That is the secret of the egusi uh, jabu. Okay. Not that you cannot use um, any other kind, any of, other pepper. kind of pepper. You can use, but egusi, uh, the, the real one that will give you the real taste, mm. the aroma, mm. and everything. You need atabigbe okay. to bring it to life for you. Okay. Then I have ogiri jabu. The ogiri jabu is being fragmented from the egusi itself. So this is the ogiri jabu. And I have palm oil. I have salt and seasoning. Then I have um, dry fish, the smoked fish that I have here. Then I have beef and pomo and assorted. Then okay. I have um, stock fish also. Okay. All right, fantastic. And um, so um, what exactly is, this is the egusi, right? The blended yeah, egusi. That is the blended. I see that it is so smooth. Yeah. Must it be in this form? Yes, it okay. must be in this form. And the color, inside, talk to us about yeah. the color. Inside, I have the atagbigbe, okay. the actually dry pepper. Okay. I have onions, and I also have my ginger in it. Ginger? Yes, wow. I had little ginger okay. Okay. inside it. Ah, so that nice. is, yeah, that's it. Egusi Ijebu. I've never had this before, so I'm pretty excited about, you know, new meals, trying out new meals from different cultures and traditions. It gets me always so excited. And we have our gari here. This gari is like semu. No, this is it's lebo. It's so smooth. This is lebo. Lebo, lebo. gari. Yeah. What's you know lebo those, gari? Um, the lumps from the gari, you know, when you, after making gari, they sieve it to bring out the smooth one. Oh. You know, that other part. Okay. So this is the, oh, this is it. Oh, okay. You, you enjoy I hear it. there's little starch in this one. Mm, 
Mm. Is it this true? This trash has been extracted. Extracted out. already. Okay, yes. okay, okay. You All know, right, after the guys. process of making gari, mm. after blending, you put on a stone to extract your stash out. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. Interesting stuff happening here in the kitchen. I'm pretty, pretty, pretty excited because we are going to Ijebu today. Today, we are having a goosey Ijebu and we are having it with a hot meal of eba. Ooh, what a perfect way to start our mornings, shall we? So where do we begin, um, Chef Dunas? Where do we begin with our, what, what, are we, what do we start? Uh, what I'm are we going to put the, the goosey on the fire first. Okay. Then the Ainik stock water. So okay. I'm going to re-season this okay. to get my stock out again. Okay. Because I don't want, I needed it to be tender very well. Okay. So that's why. So we're going to recook our beef. Yes, I'm going to recook. Our pomo and yes. our sauté. Yes, just for I me see to stock have. Fish there, so yes. everything is going back into the heat. Yes. Yes. So once the juice is out, we're going to use it for our for the egusi. egusi. Yes. Fantastic. That's what I'm going um, to do. So what is the consistency for the egusi ijebu? Is it, you know. Um, egusi ijebu is always watery. Oh, it's watery, okay. but the abekuta's own you say it clumped together. Oh, okay, but then Ibo's own they have vegetable, in yes, they will have vegetable. In yes. So there's no vegetable, going there's in nothing this in this. So you can also use this to have you can also have this with rice, you can have it with, honey. yeah, some people do, but mainly. It doesn't really go with rice, okay. So it's eba, it it's goes eba, with bando, any swallow, any swallow, oh, okay. Choice. okay. I can't wait for this to be ready. Pretty, pretty excited. I hope you are as well. Well, you wouldn't say we've not done anything for you. You, of, you that likes to eat egusi soup. We've thought we are going to teach you another way to enjoy your egusi soup. But hey, while we are pre pre preparing things here in the kitchen, let's head over to the couch for some Comic-Con discussion with Titi. Yeah, do you remember what it felt like to pick up a comic book and read through it with such joy? I know that social media has sort of taken over that space, but there was just something about the feel of a brand new comic book. In fact, comic books are some of the most expensive assets in the world. There are some comic books that are worth millions of dollars. And uh, yeah, that's why there are comic conventions all over the world. In 2012, the Lagos Comic Con began. And today, we are joined by Ayodele Elegwa. He's fondly known as the dream maker among Nigeria's comic and animation industry insiders. He is the producer and director of various highly acclaimed short film animations such as Ajaka Lost in Rome, Hero Core, Strike Guard, and many more. And he is the founder and convener of the Lagos Comic Convention. It's great to have you here once again. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Yeah, Lagos yeah, Comic Con. So I was actually there at the very first edition. Wow. Um, at the Necker Hall in 2012 in uh, Alausa, not far from, from sh the uh, shrine, Fela Shrine. Yeah, actually the first one no, was in that. Water Parks. Water Parks, that yes. was, okay, so yes, the one the second at Necker, one. that was yes. the second one. Okay, yeah. fantastic. Yeah. So now you've come 12 years later we're still doing Lagos Comic Con, and now it's in a huge facility like Landmark. That means it has grown in leaps and bounds. But you need to talk to us about the journey. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, uh, it's been, it's, a, it's an awesome long journey um, to, um, to be doing this uh, for the community. You know, yesterday I was just thinking about it, that if not for Lagos Comic Con, we probably, be, probably won't be hearing anything about comics you know, in Nigeria. Um, so it's been a long journey, it's been a tedious, hard one, um, but we thank God for where we are. We owe it to the fans, we owe it to the comic creators who still need this platform to, to showcase their work, showcase their comic books, their ideas, and of course to network and you know, get to meet each other at least once in a year okay. from all over Nigeria. They come together and then they, you know, they network and share ideas and say, look, we are still in this game and yeah. we are doing well. So uh, as far back as 2013, 2014, there were some conversations regarding whether the actual printed comic would still be relevant in a time like 2024. Uh, but we've seen that myth busted. People mm. still love their comics. People are in love with animation. And speaking of animation, I know that there's a, a major animated movie that you're going to be talking about during this Comic-Con. Yeah, one of the highlights of this year's um, event is that we are bringing in uh, Dewumi Okukwe from the US. Um, 
he has this animated series called Iyanu. I'm sure if you've seen Iwaju, yeah. now Iyanu is, this, is another big blockbuster coming to series, wow. coming to HBO Max, Cartoon Network, wow. and of course, showing on Showmax. It will be okay. screening at this year's event, and they will be telling us about his journey, uh, the voiceover actors will be coming, the wow. directors will be coming. Okay. It's going to be a big one to showcase what a Nigerian is doing, you know, to tell the Yoruba story, you know, in yeah. diaspora. So, um, now... I I want to talk a bit about the creatives. Um, so the creatives are not really considered celebrities, you know, uh, uh, on, in every, the everyday entertainment sense of things, but these are extremely creative people who put pen to paper, the drawings, the, the, the energy that they put into this work. Um, how do you think uh, Comic-Con is celebrating them this year? This is a very good question because when I, when I started Comic-Con 2012, one of, the, one of my desires was, because back in the day, nobody was calling us for interviews. We are, we are not on TV, nobody was talking about us, nobody cared if you're a comic artist or not. And I said, look, we needed a platform that we can celebrate ourselves. And now, Lagos Comic Con gives them that platform. They're on posters, they're on billboards, they feel like they're superstars. You don't have to be a musician or an actor or a TV presenter to be on TV. <laughs> now a comic artist is on TV, you know? Yeah. And th that is one of the things that Lagos Comic Con stands for, celebrating this art form. This art form must not die. And one of the things that I am here to do, I'm, I'm a champion for that art form and say, look, we need this art form because it's the foundation for animation, for film, yeah. for gaming. So if comic book artists die, then the other industries may falter. So we need to keep it safe, and Lagos Comic Con is here to do that. And that's why we are celebrating them. They are celebrities in our eyes, <laughs> you know, and we are giving them the five-star treatment this okay. year at Lagos Comic Con. Uh, well, uh, the Comic Cons I know about all over the world have uh, competitions. Any competitions this year? Yeah, there are loads of competition. We have the cosplay competition. Okay. Uh, in fact, this year is going to be very interesting. We are giving out 100,000 for the first winner, wow. 50,000 and 30,000 for the third place winner. Yeah. And we're having two categories because it's going to be a millennial versus Gen Z battle this year. Wow. Yes, there's going to be a category for the millennials <laughs> and a category for the Gen Zs. Mm. And you know, this cosplay competition is sponsored by Minimi. It's, it's a very big one. <laughs> and um, we are calling on millennials and Gen Gen Z's to come in their cosplay and so, come and show their So self. for those that don't understand what cosplay means, that is basically costuming... Um, As your favorite, favorite character, hero, hero. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and would, even though we have a lot of uh, foreign characters, we would yeah. love people to also cosplay in the Nigerian characters, Nigerian like character. Spiger, like Jinx, you know, yeah. like uh, Guardian Prime and other... Nigerian comic. Super striker. Super striker, yes. Yeah. Okay. You know, that we have as well. Fantastic. Yeah. I was going to actually touch on this uh, hero. Um, um, I'm going to call it the mentality. Mm. The, 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 the way heroes sort of shaped uh, our, most of our childhoods. Uh, and these comic book heroes, such as, you know, the likes of Spider Man and, and Superman and Batman, came from comics mm -hmm. and then evolved, of course, into uh, cartoons and then, of course, major movies. Um, do you see any of our Nigerian comic book heroes ever taking flight like that? Yes, they are taking flights. I, I do know that one of my comic books is being adapted to a TV series. Okay. And of course, we have um, a comic book from Comic Republic, which is another big yeah. studio in Nigeria. Yeah. They just signed a deal with Universal Studios to produce a movie for their comic book. So mm -hmm. it's really taking flight. It's really taking flight. And more people are... Uh, like Iano, I'm talking about was yeah. formerly a comic book as well, okay. you know. So uh, even Kugali was a comic book company before this did, you know, Iwaju, you know. So you, you can see that the heroes are taking flight. Yeah. But I also want to mention that I feel that with our current economic status in this country, uh, I realize that a lot of people are being selfish and they are not. They don't want to be heroes. We need more heroes okay. in Nigeria, and I think that's the importance of comic books. We need more people to be selfless, you know, and to look beyond themselves and save someone else. Yeah. You know, a lot is going on right now in the economy. <laughs> we need to help ourselves. I need to be your hero. You need to be my hero. We need more heroes. <laughs> and I think you are a hero for keeping this going for 12 years now. And uh, Godspeed on the next 12. Uh, now, there's uh, a lot of people who are probably wondering where they can get an actual comic book right here in Nigeria. I think you need to pop down for the Lagos Comic Con that's coming up very, very soon. Go check it out on... It's coming up. It's coming up yeah. this Saturday, yeah. 14th of September at Landmark Event Center.
We have to wrap it up, guys, but I'll be seeing you at Comic-Con. Let's take a quick break. There's still more on Wake Up Nigeria. All right, it's time for us to talk tech. And uh, when you talk tech, there are actually so many angles to look at it from. But this morning, we have uh, the pleasure of having this conversation uh, to talk about uh, how to... I suddenly couldn't remember the topic <laughs> But first, let me introduce you, okay? Because okay. that's the right thing to do. You look gorgeous, by Thank the way. You. Thank okay, you. Okay, so uh, this morning on tech, we are talking about utilizing... Uh, ensuring that your children maximize the usage of tech education, that's tech exactly. schools. And so we have a certified educator in that space who has worked with several schools and organizations. She has the purpose of helping individuals leverage the smartphone to boost their productivity and profitability as well. Uh, so we're talking about monitoring your child's performance while on a tech course. It's so good to have you Thank here. Thank you so much. Ms. How are you doing? Very well. I'm very fine. It's good to be on the show again. It's so good <laughs> to have you here. Okay, so when we talk about children getting tech education, um, so many parents are beginning to get enlightened on that fact. Yeah. Uh, so what exactly, especially for parents who are still, you know, who are yet to see the benefit, what exactly do they need to know regarding getting tech education? Okay, so um, for parents, there are so many things they need to know because of the fact that um, tech is already, tech is here, and we just need to ensure that our children are being able to one way or the other, gets in line with this tech education. Mm. Last, week, last week on the show, we talked about this same topic, and I was you know, sharing that every niche, every sphere of life, every occupation or any profession that you want to become in life, there is a tech education, there's a tech skill that is surrounding that niche. Sure. If you want to go into education, we have edutech. You want to go into finance, we have fintech. You want to go into health. So, the, so they are already, you know, we already have this, you know, we already have tech associated with all this. Almost everything. All this profession. Yeah. So as parents, it is important that we are, you know, we allow our children get equipped with a tech knowledge. And, you know, one way to, uh, to make this possible is for parents involving, in, you know, parents involving when their children is you know, getting a tech knowledge. Okay. You know, sometimes some parents... Parents getting involved when their children, you know, are getting tech knowledge. Yes. So when also, I, so parents okay. are usually so busy. Yes. Yes, parents are usually busy. But then, I still always say that where your treasure is, mm -hmm. your heart is your there. Heart lies, yeah. Because if the children realize that mommy is not interested in this knowledge that I'm getting, mm -hmm. it sort of pulls the child's urge and the child's... Um, how do I explain it? It sort of... Exactly, because when, when, when a child knows that I'm learning this tech skill and my mom or my dad is involved, you know, one way or the other, mm -hmm. and when I have questions, probably I'm learning a tech like graphic designing, for example, and I have a question to ask, I can always go to my mom. Just even if, you know, I usually tell parents that, even, uh, thank you, even if it's just the basic knowledge that you have, so that your child knows that this knowledge that I'm getting, one way or the other, my parents are fanning me from behind. You know, it sort of like helps the children know that what they are learning is important. Mm -hmm. You know, I've been in classes where you want to tell a child to speak to your mom or ask your mom that you just get more information from your mom. And then the child tells you, ah, Miss Betty, don't even bother to even ask. Don't even bother to even send me to my mom because she doesn't even know anything. Mm -hmm. And it pulls the child's interest. Mm -hmm. So in as much as parents are very busy, yes, we, the truth of the matter is we all have 24 hours. There's nobody that has 24.5 hours. But I still always tell parents that at least have, you know, even if it's 0.1% knowledge of that, you know, education that your child is getting into, especially in tech, so that the child can see that you're also interested. And it's, it's not difficult. Once you're able to get your child into a tech knowledge, the facilitator or the organization requests for their curriculum. Mm. Just request, request for their curriculum. Let me see what the child is going to be learning. Let me see the weekly um, timetable, the schedule. That's way you are because we are adults. So definitely, I believe that at least we should have just a little percentage of that knowledge, so that the child can see that mommy is interested, dad is interested, just to balance the. So I see that you've segued into the monitoring aspect. How do you monitor it? Okay, so there are various ways to monitor it. Now, it's a tech, it's a tech skill, it's a tech knowledge. One way to monitor is to involve the child in a practice. So your child is learning animation, for example, and the, the, the curriculum or the, the facilitator or the organization or the company says that the child will be able to 
do this, do this, and do that. If you want to monitor that kind of um, that knowledge, ask the, engage the child in a practice. You may not necessarily know everything, but you could just tell the child, okay, so you're learning stop motion animation from Miss Betty. Can you try to do this? Can you try to animate this, this flower vase, this remote? Okay, once the child is able to, you know, have that little practice, that's where you as a parent, you already know that, okay, this child is getting this skill. This child is, you know, undergoing, the, the knowledge that this child is getting is important, right? That's where you're one way monitoring. Another way is most parents, when you, when you talk about monitoring, what most parents will say they want to try to know what their children is doing on their devices. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that's, if, that, if, I can, if I can go through that, mm -hmm. that channel. So they want to know what their parents are doing, on, what their children rather is doing on their devices. And I, just like I shared last week, that before a parent gives their child any device, there are some certain parental controls that as a parent you can put into that device. Mm -hmm. Okay, so one of the most popular is Google Family Link. Mm -hmm. So you get your device as a parent, you get your child's device, you install Google Family Link in your device as a parent, you install Google Family Link in your child's device. That way you're able to sync your device with your child's device. So you're able to monitor what? the site that they are visiting, you're able to restrict some certain applications because you wouldn't want them to go into some certain places, you're able to restrict it, you're able to know the duration that they spend on this particular application, okay. on this particular device. You know, so that way, ensuring that you're putting them into practice and also using the Google Family, the Google Family Link app, okay, the Google Family Link app <laughs> mm -hmm. to, also, to also measure um, their activities as well. All right, so it's, it's actually important to monitor whatever your children are doing, especially exactly. uh, in the on online space. However, for parents who probably do not have that, um, you know, the, the capability, to afford maybe a device for their child or to even put their child in the tech space. In what ways can these children still benefit from the tech space pending when their parents can afford it? Mm, okay, um, I'm trying to look for the best answer for that. Mm. Okay, so they cannot afford a device. They can't afford a device for their child. Okay. So the child probably shares theirs as well. Mm -hmm. And then of course they cannot afford to pay for a course or having the child get proper um, education to learn a tech skill, what should they do? Okay, so we already have fantastic courses that, especially when you go on YouTube Kids, we already have ready-made free course mm. that would you know, help your child understand, especially when you're able to identify the space that the child wants to get into. Okay, we are even currently recently launched, you know, for us, we are trying to put up a, a platform where children can be able to get digital skills, okay? So YouTube is there, YouTube Kids is there. We also have um, applications like Udemy, we have Coursera, but then this kind of applications, you need to ensure that you as a parent as well, you I have this. To make yes, you, of it. Exactly. you know what, thank you for your time. Thank you so much, uh, thank you so thank you much, so much indeed. Thank you. All right, uh, so with all this talk about tech, we need to talk food as well before, <laughs> especially this Egusi Jabu, I'm really interested in learning how to make this version. I've learned a different version before. Uh, so, MM, show us this one with Chef Bunas. Went to Harvard, just so you know. Welcome to the kitchen. With me is Chef Dunas. And this morning she's making a goosey ijebu. Right. So quickly, Chef Dunas, tell us, um, talk to us about the ingredients and tell us where we're at right now. Um, the, my ingredient, I have the melon seed. Okay. I have the atabigbe, which is the chili dry pepper that we discussed earlier. And I have ogiri jebu. I have onions. I have ginger that I blended to make my egusi paste. Egusi? Uh, yes, the egusi. Wait, wait a minute. What is, is egusi a Yoruba name? Yeah, egusi oh, a Yoruba name. Oh, okay. In English is melon. But why is it mostly made by evil people? Mm, well, I don't know. There is Ibo Egusi. There are some, we have, I think we have two types of Egusi. Okay. There is There's a hand peel small, one. Small one. Oh, like the Bene seed. It looks like yes. Bene seed. Yeah. Okay. So that small one is Ibo Egusi. Ibo Egusi. But the other oh. one, the Yoruba one, you have the hand peel. Yeah, and, and the machine, machine peel. Peeled, yeah. You understand? So oh. Egusi has their, has their own Egusi. Oh, okay. Yes. Okay. So now anyway. with the cooking. 
I blended it okay. to paste. I added water to it. Then so, um, the egusi, you blended it with tomatoes? No, 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 no. no. sorry, just the chili pepper. Chili, dried. Dried chili pepper. Yes. Okay. Then I also said that you can actually use any pepper of your choice. Okay. You can use rodo, you can use bell pepper. And then you also the added onions and I ginger. added onions and little ginger little into ginger. it. Okay. Then you okay. keep turning it. So you put in your pot, okay. add water to make it watery. Oh. Yes, to make okay. it watery. So you you keep turning. So did so you use the stock from the beef? I've not used this. stock. You've not used it yet? I've not okay. used the stock. Okay. Until it's done, that is when I'll be able to add salt or seasoning. Okay, so it. how long is this going to cook for? You know, it depends on the heat mm. that is underneath. Okay. That okay. we determine. Okay. But like, um, you allow it to cook for 20 minutes. Okay. For the agusi to be done very okay. well. So how do we know when, when it's, it's done? done? No, you will know when it's done. Okay. okay. You will know. You will perceive the smell. Oh. Now we have to add our ogiri, ogiri jebu. So there's inside. ogiri and there's ogiri ijebu. This is ogiri jebu. Okay. Ibo too has their own. Yes, they ogiri. have their own ogiri. Yeah. Yes. Okay. But so this, this particular is... one is for egusi ijebu. Egusi ijebu. Egusi ijebu. Yes. Egusi ijebu. Okay. So we keep stirring. Yes. So that and stirring. Yes. And stirring. <laughs> then when it starts. Um, Boiling, then I'll cover it up. Okay, okay, okay. So when does the the beef and all of the orishi orishi go in? When the egusi is ready. When the egusi is ready. I've already washed my beef, uh, my fish with okay. salt and. What kind of butter. fish is this, though? It's a different kind. Of, is it hake? This no. This is barracuda fish. Barracuda. Yes, this is barracuda fish. Oh, okay. So we're just going to put it. We're not going to break it. I'm not breaking. Oh. You can anyhow. Anyhow, you want it. it. Yes. Okay. But I prefer to have it. We are definitely fisting this morning. <laughs> Who says you cannot eat swallow in the morning? Well, we right here on the show are daring you on. So please go ahead and eat whatever your heart wants. <laughs> it's food. Anyways, we have to go on a quick break now. The Eba. Yes, the Gary. Yes, we're going to make that. While we go on a quick break, the show continues in a bit. It's the top of the hour. You don't want to miss the second half of the show. Stay with us, guys. Hey, hey, hey. The second half for our Thirst Today edition is here. And we hope you're thirsty for some juicy content to fill you up and keep you satisfied. Well, juicy content. Juicy content. <laughs> Yes, with great conversations, <laughs> finger licking delicacies, beautiful music that we're about to serenade you with. Into today, before the weekend, where would you rather be? Talk to me, tell me. If not tuned in to the best breakfast television show on Nigerian television. Yes. Please don't look at the BTS today because there's a lot happening revelation-wise on Instagram. <laughs> but really, uh, we, we want you strapped, uh, uh, your, you know, strap on your seatbelt. That's what we'd like you to do. And get on this ride with us. Let us take you on a gleeful journey of fun, fun, and more fun. And Egusi Ijebu. Egusi Ijebu. Egusi is fine because of uh, non Yorubas, but if you want to pronounce the soup the way it is, say, as a Yoruba person, you have to say eh. Eh. Go. Si. Egusi. Egusi. Eh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that cracks me up real good. I know. So we have Chef Dunas <laughs> with Chef Titi. Eh, I say Chef Titi. Yes. Titi is in the kitchen, though. <laughs> Anyone in the kitchen is a chef, practically, <laughs> so yeah. We've got them in the kitchen. Titi. Let's go. Ooh, there. Just lift it up. Lift it. Let them see the Gary that looks like Semo. Mmm, nice. Fluffy. Uh -uh. Fluffy Gary. Uh -uh. Oh, it's so smooth. I, 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 I really don't like the cocoa Gary, like that, that uh, coarse Gary that much, but this is an alternative I am so willing to eat today. Lovely, lovely, lovely. You know, people don't know that there are different types of Gary. Mm. So when you mention that word Gary, put some respect on it. Gary. There's uh, Gary, but that's the yellow one. Mm -hmm. There's the Benue Gary. There's Benue Gary. There's Jebu Gary. Mm. There's this Lebu. There's one kind of Gary I, I had that somebody brought from the north one time. I was like, so it's possible for Gary to be like this as it, well. Was it sweet? It was sweet. Ah, okay. Okay. And I was like, 
Okay. Anyways, there are different so many. Yes, yeah, so, 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 so many, so hey, many. Thank you so much for joining us on the show this morning. My name is Mary Bashua Alimi. And I'm M.M. Emil Kocha. Remember, guys, to use the hashtag Wake Up Nigeria on CVC across all our social media platforms. If you caught up on our earlier gist on the What's Up and About segment, we want to hear your comments. Yes. Send them in right now. Okay. We are also live on... Yes, uh, we are also live on GoTV Channel 16, UHF Band 49, uh, you can also follow us across all social media platforms at TVC Entertainment underscore. Now, let's tell you what we have for you. This are... All right, then, after some really great music, which is, of course, art, we move on to actual creative arts with our painter and art historian that's in the building with us, Mr. Adishola Agbeleye. It's great to have you here with us. I'm so happy to be here, too. Soon to be Dr. Aguile, soon to be. All right, so uh, it might interest you to know that he's working on his PhD in this field. He's also uh, yes. lecturing on this yes. as well at yes. uh, the Yabatec. Yes. All right, in amazing, amazing. Yes, uh, we have some of your pieces here on display. Okay. Uh, let's touch on some of the ones we can see right now. There's one, uh, there's two right in front of us. Uh, what media did you use to create these pieces? Yeah. Um, I must say it's a great privilege to be here this morning. And um, as regards the works, this first work was one of my oldest work. Okay. Then just I brought it just to, you know, show the you know development that has taken place in my art practice, and uh, it's the medium used for the painting is an oil okay. on canvas. Okay. And so it's just displaying the Makuko area, mm. which is an, uh, an area when you in, say your oldest piece, yes. how many years ago was this created? Uh, that's about, um, uh, about seven years ago. Wow. Amazing. Yes. Okay, all right. Yeah. And right beside it, we have uh, another very colorful piece. Yes. Uh, what is this style called? It looks like oil paint, and but it's not blended. Yes. What is that style of? of that's art? that's an impasto okay. uh, technique of painting, where details are not really you know put into consideration, okay. but the artistic expression, mm. which comes with the the inspiration that the artist, you know, is, and uh, the message is trying to convey. So it's been, you know, laid down with a palette knife. Palette knife. Yes. Okay, yes. To create, you know, some effects mm -hmm. on the canvas. So now that palette knife you use there, that, that image in, in my head could be many things. It yes. could be a woman sweeping. No, yeah. It could be a woman backing a baby. Yes. It could be someone trying to pick something from the ground. Yeah, that, 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 shows, that shows uh, you have a good sense of uh, you know, observation. And uh, it's a woman yeah. you know, carrying some you know, babies. Okay. And then with the Groda, Gona, uh, the older ones, yeah. uh, you know, walking beside her. Okay. And uh, that I'm trying to... You know, what inspired me to do that work as to, you know, I have to give kudos to my late mom. You know, she, she really tried raising us up. So I'm just trying to, you know, express my, my childhood experience on that canvas. Amazing. She's an amazing woman. Amazing. And that's why you, if you watch some of the uh, other pieces, you see that I'm you know, depicting the importance of, you know, women in the society and they should yeah. be celebrated. I'm, you know? I'm trying to take a glimpse of one of the pieces here beside me. Okay. Um, and you brought quite a few really remarkable pieces here. Yes, yes. Uh, there's one that has a, a face upside down and a face right side up. Please okay. explain what that piece is all about. Okay. Uh, I titled it uh, in Yoruba language, Amuludun. Okay. You know, without women in the society, I, I, I guess that, that was why God said to Adam that it's not good to, for you to be alone. Mm. So he provided 
a helper. Mm. So in that painting, I use uh, a stylized method of painting. That, you, know, you, can, you could see the images are represented with geometrical shapes. Sure. And then the, they were playing, you know, drums, mm. then keep uh, guitar and talking drum, mm. which, you know, a this is a combination of African rhythm and then, uh, you know, incorporated with the Western, uh, you know, music. music. But the idea there is just to show how women, you know, makes the world a better place for the men. I'm the looking society. at the, the color palette you use for that particular painting. Okay. I feel like there's different hues of green, blue. Yes, uh, yes. Right? Uh, yes. So your mixing process, where, okay. do, where do these ideas come from? Is it just basically what paint you have access to at that point in time? No, you no, no. You actually... If you could observe uh, uh, in art, we have the elements of design, okay. which are line, color, shape, form, and texture. Mm. Then we have the principles of design, which are uh, balance, rhythm, proportion, and, uh, uh, and uh, harmony, Harm you understand. That so I harmony. was able yeah. to use one of the elements, which is color. Yeah. And there's what we call color scheme in painting. And if you see the dominant color there, which you said is green, and is complemented with a touch of red. Mm. And you know, green means in the uh, connotes the development, the growth. Mm. And uh, I purposely use that to express what the role women plays in the society. They, they, without women, we are nothing, women. Mm. And uh, you know, and then with red, which in, <laughs> indicates, you know, blood, which is life. So. I have to, honestly, doctor, well, soon to be doctor, mm -hmm. uh, we, we are so happy you're able to come okay. and showcase this to us. The yeah. geometric nature of that particular piece and the colors, the hues there, they're, they're yes, so sir. warm and inviting. Thank and you. Um, thank you for all you do. Yes, thank you. All right, then, that's our art display for today. Uh, but we'd love to hear your thoughts on some of the pieces we showcased. Use our hashtag Wake Up Nigeria on TVC. Let's take a break. And we are back. Thanks for staying with us. We've got our final guest right here on the couch. He goes by Igo. Igo. Tega Leonard. He's an actor, model, and has featured in quite a number of movie projects, series, and a number of commercials. I don't think I've seen anyone in a really long time who has taking part in a lot of commercials. You have done quite a number of commercials. You're welcome on the show. Thank you. Thanks for being here. Thank you, you look like, great. Oh, thank you. Yeah. You're giving such demure, mindful vibes. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> so talk to us, Ego, how is that journey, you know, in the entertainment industry being for you? Because I mean, you've basically dabbled in different areas in the entertainment industry, not just the movies, which you are, you know, known for. Talk to us about that journey so far for you. It's, it's quite a, a tough one, but because of the, the, the love you have for the craft, it, it makes it easy and simple for you. Why I'm saying that is because, um, you know, this uh, movie thing is not easy to break into, into the movie sure. industry. So you have to have the passion mm -hmm. and uh, the perseverance because you're going to have a lot of no's, you know, do quite a number of auditions, mm -hmm. you know, after going for auditions, people will tell you you're, you don't fit in for this role, mm. you don't fit in for that, you don't fit in for... When you even look at yourself and you know that you are the one for this particular role and you, you, at the end of the day, you don't get it. It's, it's kind of discouraging. I have a lot of people who we started together, but they are not here anymore. Because they, they couldn't left. continue. Because they couldn't continue. Mm. You know, some of them will even tell me, what are you still doing there? Can't you just leave? This thing is becoming too much because I started way back from... When I was in school, Delta State University, okay. yeah, sometimes I leave my department because I study computer science and mathematics. I leave my department, I go for auditions, so mm -hmm. I go for theater arts to just to look at how they act. Meanwhile, I'm supposed to be in my class studying, but I'll be there looking at them, you know. And sometimes Delta State, I, from Delta State, I go to Asaba to just to mm -hmm. go and audition. audition. You can imagine the distance. Wow. Sometimes I use my own 
Resources. School fees. Oh, wow. Yeah. At, at some point, there was a time where I used my father's school fees. My, my, own, my, my school fees, the school fees my father gave to me. I used it. And, you know, and I, could, I didn't even get, I didn't the, call, get the role. I didn't get the role. I didn't get the call back. <laughs> but then how have you been able to, you know, um, deal with, you know, some of the setbacks, you know, these challenges? Because, I mean, it's, it could be traumatizing. It, how have you been able to deal with it and you still keep on, you know, it, holding on? It's actually regardless. traumatizing. It's actually traumatizing because I, that's, that's, the passion, that's where the passion comes in. You know, I, I did mathematics and computer science. Of course, I should be in the bank sector, well, working. Or tech. You have, um, or tech. You have um, siblings. You have people out there calling you. Who to, are you? Who? Because you're done with school. Mm. You have to take care of them. Now, you, this is what you, you're doing, and the money is not coming. Mm. But the passion keeps you there. So I was going through your page, just your social media page yesterday, and I realized that um, I noticed that you've sort of, you transform yourself a lot for some of the characters that you have to play. You know, and um, talk to us about what that feels like, you know, having to look different. So today you're, you know, on dread, on the, yeah, on the then tomorrow cuts. you're on dreads, yeah. and then next tomorrow you're on skin. Yeah. Um, you know, talk to us about, you know, those trends, how you transition into, you know, to fit into some of these characters and how it impacts you, you know, as a person. Okay, in the industry, in the that's industry. what you call a stereotype. Okay. So nobody wants to look in a, a, certain, a certain way, you understand? So yeah. most, most directors will tell you, I want you to look this way, mm. you understand? Most of them will tell you, I want you to look skinny. Most of them will tell you, I want you to look fat, I want you to look chubby, I want you to have this kind of hair, do and all that. So most times, in recent times, they've been telling me to come with a dread. I don't know, I don't know why. Most of them like the dread, kind of, that's why I've been doing the dread. Often, a lot. recently okay. a lot, yeah, okay. because they, they like the dread. So that is, um, so you have to transform yourself. You can't be in, as an actor, you can't just stay in one. But if you are getting more um, demands yeah. for that certain, that certain character, does that not sort of um, put you in a bus, box as an actor? Yes, not, not re it, it, it is actually. But the reason why I don't want to put myself in that box, that's why I'm having this look normal look now. right okay. now. Because my dread, I just took the dread off about, I think, four days ago. I just finished a project, a movie project is coming out soon. Okay. And um, I, I had the dread on. I played this uh, a bad, like, you know, a character. And I took it off because I have an audition. I was supposed to be in a TV commercial. Because most TV commercials, they don't like you on dread. They want to see you with that father figure. Because most of my TV commercials, I play the fatherly role. Okay. So they want to see me in this Look, okay. in Nigeria industry, commercials, they don't see fathers as people who put on dreads. Dread. So that's, I don't want to sure. box myself in that dread kind of way. Because most of them, directors, Nollywood movies, mm. they want to see me in that dread. Okay. But I, I sometimes I go off and on because of the commercials. So you said something about playing the lover boy yeah, role. role. And uh, it's, so for some, it could seem a little bit controversial, you know, for some people, and that's because there are times where you have to really push yourself. You know, you have to, you know, do things that you wouldn't normally do. So, for example, I know you're not married, but if you were married and you were, you know, asked to be intimate with another female character. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, of course, I've, I've done that before. Okay. Uh, there was in my, in one of my movies, I, I actually, I, I'm going to tell you this. I did a particular project that I was supposed to be having stuff with a lady yeah. on bed. At that time, I was a pastor protocol in, in my church. church. Wow. And the pay was quite okay. Not that, you know, not only would it make believe. Mm -hmm. And I did it. My pastor saw it and it was, I have to do it for, this is my passion. This mm. is what I'm in for. So we have to make you believe that this is what you're, most you're of the suspended. kisses, you, most of the, <laughs> Well, not but castigated kind of the, oh, wow. yeah people wow. came out like yeah, why, why why how could you do this kind of thing? I, 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 come on this is what you can't i left you left the church i left because it was too much anywhere i go to at that point people are just saying wow this that it was too much and i had to leave so you you're chose... not going to pay my bills. this is what pay my bills okay. and you are saying i should not that i did it for real yeah but it, it also sort of you know um, what it, it it sort of um um affects your faith as a christian right because that is a church that you know you you you've grown in it has yeah. built your faith at faith that faith as a christian mm -hmm. and did that not in any way sort of you know um, no the church is in me ah, church is in that. us i like that <laughs> my christ like is that. in me oh i fellowship with god it, mm -hmm. it doesn't necessarily mean i have to be 
under an umbrella before. Mm -hmm. Of course, I still go to church. The fact that I'm not going to that particular, particular church. church doesn't mean I, I still go to church. Oh, wow. So this is what put food on my table, and you are telling me I can't. So, but not that I'm quarreling with them. We still, but we are still friendly, just maintain but, my yeah. steez and composure. Ooh, and all that. maintain his steez and to, composure. To stay Love and it. so that I won't affect the other people. They think I want to, you know. I understand. No, so. Let's talk about some of the, what is that character that you are yet, to, or that role rather, that you are yet to, you know, play, you know, that, you know, hasn't come yet, yeah. that you think is going to show your range as an actor? Because I think that has also been one of the biggest challenge for a lot of actors in the industry. Even when film producers are looking for people to play certain roles, they haven't seen certain characters play that role, like, you know, play that role that, you know, gives them that breakout defining moments in their career. So what do you think is that role that's going to, you know? I want to play the bad boy. What, when you say bad the boy? The bad boy, like, um, I don't know if I can mention any. Please go ahead. You. You've seen Chanty Town? Chanty, Chanty Town, Town, yes. The, the kind of role. Chidi Mokeme played? Oh, okay. This kind of role. I, that is me. Okay. I can do it very, very well. Oh, okay. But most times, the Nollywood people see you. When, once you have this kind of physique, you have... You are this, maybe you are cute, you're calm, you, they want to put you in that lover boy kind yes. of, well, you have no choice, you just have to do it. Let's talk about, I mean, I've, in this conversation, I've seen you sort of say a couple, you're saying a lot, but you're not saying a lot. Now, okay. let's delve into the movie industry just a All little right. because we have to wrap this up quickly. Right. What are some of the things that you think are happening that shouldn't be happening in the movie industry? What do you think needs to be done better? What do you think needs to improve? What do you think film producers need to do better in terms of prov improving the, uh, the, the movie industry? I think what the, the first thing they should do is, um, because now we, we, don't, we have individual um, productions, yeah. like it is not a collective production. We have individual production, and most of them don't really have the money Okay, so I think if there's a way government can come in okay. and fund some of this project, some of this project because mm. this individual project, it's, to, to make a film, it doesn't, it's not easy. Mm. You have to have a lot. Like, the money has to be there, and the, the, the profession has to be there. You have to know the job. Most of them don't know the job. Okay? okay. They don't know what it takes to, to make a production. So everybody wants to come in and make a film. And also, most of these directors and producers, they they tend to give actors roles that they, don't, they are not even, Suited. that is not them. Okay. So they should try and study these actors very well, study these characters very well before they can. And also, um, number three, uh, they should also try and make sure they don't give actors out of sentiment roles. Okay. Because most of, most of them bring their brothers yeah, and sisters and all that. Yeah, and everybody. Do. And then yeah. the film tends out to be flop. It, it doesn't come out uh, well. Igor, this has so, been an interesting conversation. Yeah. Very insightful as well. Learn so much. Thank, thank you so much you. for thank coming you. to share your journey so with much. us. So we'll quickly head over to the kitchen. All right. Here to join us. Sure. Uh, yeah. We made Egusi Ijebu. Whoa, right. that's my so favorite. So please join us, shall thank we? You so Up much. to you. All right. Oh, quickly, thank you so much for coming to the kitchen, Igor. This thank is you. Chef Dunas. would like you to have a taste of our egusi, wow. ijebo, with eba. Wow. Um, so, enjoy. It actually looks very nice. And it does, I know, right? Okay. I know it's too early to eat eba, but... It's on... very early. Ah, it's not too early. You know, some people start the day with eba. Well, so that they can, it can take them cool. through the whole day. <laughs> yeah, I think it would be easier to digest. I know, right? It's nice. Yeah, it's nice. It's, it's nice. like you weren't you expecting it to be exactly left. Like. You were surprised yeah, that it was nice. Okay. All right. Thank you, know you so much, Tega. In yeah, in Egusi. Mm -hmm. Egusi, Jebu, there's no vegetable. Oh, you can is... add if you want to, but oh, that's not... Oh, okay. Good. Okay, you can add to this. Like yeah. this. Some people want. take it with a, um, a wedu. A wedu, oh. Oh, wow. Oh. You know a wedu, yeah. right? Yeah, I know. Really. Okay. All but right. this is nice. Thank you so much, Thank Tega, you. for being here. Thank and to all our Thank guests you. for being on the show today. We appreciate you. Have a beautiful day ahead. See you tomorrow. Bye. Bye.